What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. Tonight, we're here in Queens, New York, to see the screening of Founding Fathers, the untold story, hip hop, the origins, the beginning. You think you know? You have no idea. Produced, directed by my colleague, Ron Lawrence and crew. It's a beautiful situation, so keep watching. We're gonna talk to Mr. Lawrence in a moment. We're gonna see a little trailer and see what's going on, some question and answers, and hear some, some of the people who were pioneers in the beginning. You know how we do Urban Wall Street. Keep watching. What's going on? Urban Wall Street Project on location with my partner Ron Lawrence, hit man, producer. Just did an amazing film, Founding Fathers, an untold story. I love it. Let's talk about it, Ron. What was the inspiration behind this, bro, besides the, the, the giving? Well, the inspiration was really just, you know, what I saw growing up as a kid. My brother being a part of this whole history as a DJ, me watching him. And, um, you know, it was just a big part of my life, man. And I, I, I just wanted to tell a story. Now, you know, as a, a producer and a multi-platinum producer, people don't know, you've seen the history and you've been a part of maybe what some people say, this is a, it was a new hip hop, a new era. What is your response to individuals? Because, you know, I talked about, we talked about something last week about sampling, people had a comment about it. So you're in that new generation, that mid-generation, what's your take on where you were in hip hop and where it is now with relation to the film and the Founding Fathers? I mean, I mean, I love what's going on today, you know? It's a beautiful thing, and it's just about what I did was, was to help lay the groundwork for what they're doing today, you know? And um, they just put a dis different twist to it. And, um, you know, when you listen to it, you can kind of see where the root comes from, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? And, and opposed to how we did it, and you can kind of trace the root from where that came from as well. But it's all basically the same thing, it's just a different twist. As time goes on, um, different boroughs, and, or actually different states, get to uh, participate in it and they put their twist to it. And then, there you have it, you know? Now, and it's a beautiful thing, I'm sure, I'm glad I was able to see it. I'm sure people that will see this are going to appreciate it because the story is real. A lot of people don't know the history. Everybody's hip-hop historians, we love hip-hop. But if you don't really know, like you don't know your past, you don't know where you're going. So, when you did the film, what's the one thing you want people to really get from this film, Ron, when they view it? I kind of just, just want them to, I want it to be a, a, a sort of like a learning, a learning history, you know what I mean? Just kind of teach them the principles of where certain things start and not to take it for granted and kind of give props to the people that came before them because there are a lot of unsung heroes in this, in this documentary that people um, never get credit to or they just never really heard of them. Now I know soon we're gonna we're gonna make this happen, but when 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 do you think people might be able to be so fortunate as myself and the other people here for the screen and to, to see a version, to see your version? Well, hopefully we'll see where it goes. I mean, we have we have Viacom in the house, so we'll see. This is this is the test screening right here to see what the deal is gonna be. It's a beautiful situation. Urban Wall Street founding fathers. Trust me, you will see it coming soon. It's inevitable. Beautiful thing, Ron Lawrence, founding fathers, the untold story, be on the lookout. It's a beautiful situation. It is though hip hop began in the Bronx. It did not begin in the Bronx, and a lot of this music did not begin. Like, I never knew a cool hurt. In my days, I heard of Charisma Funk, Grandmaster Flowers, you got have sound system. Things I'm talking about right here, Fab Five Freddy, I'm talking about the era beast. That inspired the DJs that created hip hop. I'm talking these is cats that made it hot that made you want to be a DJ. You tell me back with the sounds of new sounds here to put walk right in your stride. What if in your hip make your knees free? You'll never quiver, crack on We was really about maybe both, almost maybe five years ahead of the run. <laughs> Man, this this thing this thing was ugly in Brooklyn. Yes, sir. When you take her um, Grandmaster Flash and so many others, he's not the first first Grandmaster. He stole the name from Grandmaster Flowers, the original Grandmaster. 
Yo, ask Melly yeah, Mel and them about right, Fantasia. Ask Melly Mel and ask Grandmaster Flash about Fantasia. Ask them, they'll tell you when they came to Queens, where they came to. Fantasia, Lancelot, right here, South Jamaica, man. Systems. They had the piece together shit that I was talking about. All Queen DJs had nice sets, yo. And they stopped taking that away from uptown. No, it was nice, know. the house speakers and y'all did your things and the crews and all that. But, uh, hey, baby. <laughs> yo, don't you know, act like you know. Everybody was talking that uptown, uptown, but you didn't, nobody knew that Brooklyn was doing it. We was already doing it. But I know in Brooklyn, they've been doing it. I didn't know nothing about none of those cats uptown. Uptown, for our systems, I ain't hear about none of that until after all that. We was here from what, 1968, 1968. It's like Christopher Columbus. He didn't discover America. When they came to Queens, we was already doing it. There is a real beginning to history. It's been rewritten. It's been altered, history has been changed. This is just our contribution to one part of the black experience in history, music, that took place here in New York City. And so that was my error. I learned a lot, so thank you for the film. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is M. Morton Hall. I started out in the, uh, si uh, in the 50s, and I start really started doing my stuff in the 60s, where I went out to Queens with Patty LaBelle and the Bluebells at Rochdale Center. I brought Barbara Ackland when she had Love Makes a Woman, the Five Stair Steps, and so many. I've had the honor of producing some of the greatest of America's music. Miles Davis, Nina Simone, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, Donnie Hathaway, Chaka Khan, Patti LaBelle, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. It has been a hell of a ride. I've enjoyed what I've done. There's a misnomer here when we say disco. It is black music. Do not identify it as disco. It is done to separate the music. This has been done in America, it's historical. We've got to get away from that. They have put labels on our music. This is all music that everyone can appreciate. It shouldn't have a name. Music, as Miles said, music is music. No matter from what quarter it comes from. And we have made a great contribution to this country. I'm Baby J, uh, I started in 1973. As you can see, at that time, I was one of the only Latin brothers that would hang out with the brothers. <laughs> that's the way I was raised with the music, like you were saying. Uh, that's what inspired me. Uh, I grew up with a lot of these guys. And during that time, uh, Mr. Harris right here was one of the guys that gave me a break with also Ricky from New Sounds that they took me in. As one of the little guys that was always around and wanted to be part of the crew, I got inspired and I learned a lot of business techniques and promotions and a lot of times I would just be out there in everybody's faces and that's why I'm still here today. And I thank a lot of you guys. Here's the world's still in the dream. Legend, baby girl. Thank you. Okay, I'm Cutmaster DC from Brooklyn. Um, before I say anything, I have, uh, as in the documentary, I had one of the misfortunes of being on the other end of the Disco Twins, when they was battling Grandmaster Flowers. And I can confirm that they usually crush everybody that comes in their path. So I try to stay away from them as much as possible. But in any event, one of the things I would say, I don't know if they know it or not, because we never really got a chance to, uh, to really communicate or talk like that, 
But um, they kept, they definitely kept anybody, including myself, who watched them. Because I'm the baby of the bunch. I started in 77. So everybody here started a little bit before me. And I, it, I, it gives me great pleasure to be up here to see all these legends because they're, I mean, you know, they, they brought me up. And the twins, like I said, uh, I used to watch them play and do their thing. And I go back home and I say, I will not get catch it out there. They can't catch me out there. If I ever get with them, they can't catch me. So I will practice. And I have to admit, fortunately, like I said, I never had the opportunity or the pleasure to actually battle them. But I did have the opportunity and the pleasure to actually be inspired by them, as well as a lot of the big brothers up here. DJ Greg Love from New Sounds. I started back in 1968 playing records, doing house parties. Did my first, my sister's first birthday party playing the Monkey Town. I've been doing this before. Stevie Wonder did fingertips. When music started and we started doing this, nobody thought that it would go the way that it did. We knew it sounded good. We wanted to party and have a good time. But the good thing about it is that we all got along. We all helped each other. If there was a party and an amp blew out, hey, twin, can I get an album? Can I get a something? And, and that's how we did it. And it just kept on growing. But when they're talking about when mixing and cutting started, scratching was an accident that would clear a dance floor. <laughs> if you scratch a record, people would turn around and look at you and go, oh man, he sucks. <laughs> he sucks. You couldn't scratch. It started with playing re one record at a time, to mixing, then it went to a cut, and while you was trying to work on your cut, maybe it was Iruko, if you lift that one side up, you hear, <laughs> and people say, kill the DJ. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is DJ Smalls. Yes. No, listen, baby Jay, I got, a, you know, I got one up on you. I'm a little shorter than you and always was. So, uh, like baby J, I started in 1977 as well, but I was uh, every bit of 13 years old and looked every bit of eight. So I was more than a, I like a novelty act. So, I was blessed and fortunate uh, to be in, at the age where I could, I related not, not, not just to scratching and break dancing, which I, I wanted to do. I saw it, I wanted to do it. But also the sound system, the, the quality music, and the party atmosphere. <laughs> I'm Reggie. And I'm Robin. With the Disco Twins. <laughs> We started out in 1971 in Astoria Housing. Uh, we were born and raised in Astoria Housing. We're still in the game. Uh, we have the same system that we started out with in the very beginning. When we bought from Richard Long, we still have the same. Matter of fact, the purpose came back to us. We sold it and it came back to us in a different way, in a, in a roundabout way because it got too heavy because each of those speakers are about probably 450 pounds. What I really liked that I saw in the film was the collaboration between black women and black men and there was all love and peace. Like people were dancing, having a good time, which we really don't see now. And as an educator, I formerly work with high school students, I'm now a professor. A lot of my students really don't understand the origins of hip hop, nor do they understand the origins of culture and how we navigate it as a people. So I'm curious, outside of fashion, outside of, um, outside of like assisting with DJs, the science was so impressive. I mean, I think that we take for granted the type of science that went into the music, and I really applaud the filmmakers for bringing that in. Um, also, also, how can we as educators, my, my field of specialty is science, technology, and society within African diaspora, and often we make our kids believe that they are not good at math and science, and all hip hop is, the basis is math and science. So how do we integrate that into curriculum, or do you guys have any suggestions about how to do that effectively? I come from the era, same like everybody else, where a lot of the technology that's going on today, as far as, especially with DJing, because that's, that's my forte, it's not, it's, it's so different. If you take, if you combine the history, but I found that if you combine how you can gain the interest and, and fuse the two, if you take, if you look at the history of turntablism and the DJing and how it evolved to what it is now in terms of what we like to call push button DJs or whatever, but the whole point of the matter is, is how technology has changed even the way and style that people DJ now. 
that can probably also gain an interest in the students in regards to between the technology and learning the craft as well. Whether you agree or disagree with what where it has gone, it's still, you know, the fact of the matter is that technology has taken over in certain regards, but you can introduce a lot of the science to the students through the way that it has changed through technology. So that might be of some help as well. What about the female DJ stuff that she has? Let me get to that real quick. Um, just to piggyback on what Cutmaster DC was saying, if there's, the, the idea, if, if I mean, we gotta put our heads together. That's a great, great idea, but to, to actually put it in effect, we've got to come up with something. Um, myself, I went to the high school performing arts once, well, as I was in the music industry as well, in, in the hip hop world. In, in 77, I was involved in the school, and we started a, uh, uh, um, a class called uh, Voice and Addiction, uh, Recording Technique, and Stage Presence. One of, uh, as one of many, but those three uh, were, were almost similar to what I was doing in the world of hip hop, in regards to uh, mic control and so forth. So there's different, with, I, there's different elements I think we can attack this. Just we gotta put our heads together. Well, we don't get an opportunity to write our own history very often. And I said this on my Facebook post like a couple of days ago. This is an extraordinary, extraordinary film. Now, the question I want to ask, because I, I can talk about this because I go a long way back with a lot of brothers on that stage, the twins, small <laughs> Jeff. And so we can talk forever, but my question to you guys is, would you please tell us, all right, talk to us about the trajectory from the park jams to records. What was that like for y'all? When we started out, we didn't think it was going to evolve the way it did. We were playing records and playing records, and we thought that was it. When the MCs was coming along, it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> they're here and they're gone. It took us by surprise. They passed us. They kept going, and we stayed frozen in time. That's what happened. It's now evolving, and now some of the DJs are coming to life because they're doing different things. They're reinventing themselves in different ways. It's funny because like what he's saying is true. I actually became an MC just to go further by doing a record called Brooklyn's in the House. I didn't want an MC. I didn't have a choice. So but I'm still a DJ, you know, but like he said, because they evolved, they took it a step further. Now the DJ wasn't as interesting anymore to people and we didn't really have a channel in order to maintain that. The MCs got the spotlight and kept moving. Now we have, there's other avenues now that we can, you know, we can actually go in and things like this, as far as what these brothers are doing now to bring us back to the forefront along with other um, things that are coming along with, like as far as sponsorships by companies and what have you, it's now actually getting the DJs back to where they belong. What's going on everybody? Still here at the Founding Fathers, the documentary, it's a beautiful situation. I'm here with a hip hop legend, Skep Anthem, producer of Tribe Called Quest. What's good, brother? How you doing, brother? How you doing? Right. So uh, let's talk about it. You give me a little behind the scenes on, you know, when this is going to drop. Yes, take, yes, 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 okay, yes. Okay. When I first heard about this growing up in the Bronx, um, being the Bronx is my world and knowing that feeling the whole history about hip hop started in the Bronx and then Ron Lawrence brought up to my attention about it, the, I got the truth for you I was like what's the truth started out here in Queens and Brooklyn not the Bronx I'm like what are you talking about and then to see this this documentary it really woke me up and for and really showed me what things really really was about hip hop music, DJing, the art of the craft of DJing, the equipment, and even though how brothers are breaking down about the different equipment, the speakers, I was there. I saw speakers being built. I knew about the birthers, you know, hanging around with Jazzy J and Bam Barter. Jazzy J used to hang with Richard Long, and which taught him how to build the birther that went into all the different venues, like the, um, the Roxy's, um, the Palladium, Dance Interior, all his clubs, you know, that Richard Long, you know, built. But to hear these brothers, to hear from their story, it touched me and really educated me to the next, you know, level. And I'm really proud to 
right. see something like this for our people, right. man. Appreciate it. Yes, man. Appreciate you dropping, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always legends. Yes, yes, yes. Skeff and Slim, we gets love too. You know yes. how we do. Yes, sir. Always good, baby. Yes, sir. So what's good? We're still here. Urban Wall Street on location with the men behind the movie. I'm talking about my man Ron, Hassan, doing big things, founding fathers, the untold story. How did it feel to do this movie? The reception and what you want people to learn from this brother. We want to give him a crash course, man. We want to teach him from beginning to end. We want to teach him about the history of the turntables, you know, the, the, the um the street light poles, where we we were all actually plugging up the sound systems and getting the sound. There's just so much to learn. You know, the bullet tweeters that came from the light posts, um, the DJs in Queens and Brooklyn and some parts of Harlem that, that never really got um, to tell their story. There's just so much information that's coming out of this documentary. And once you see it, man, it's going to open your eyes. Right. Now, well, Hassan, we all grew up on hip hop so definitely. If you say, okay, 20 years before, 20 years now, you've seen a difference from the beginning till now. What's, your, what's the biggest difference you see? Uh, the biggest difference I see is back in the days, you know, lyrically, you had to have skills to, to even try to get a deal. Now it's like, I mean, if I wanted to get a deal, I probably could get a deal right now, the way they rapping, you know. Um, there's no skills involved anymore. Now it's more about, basically, if you're down with a crew that got money and they could push you, and that's what it is right now. It's not even about content. It, do, it doesn't matter how nice you are anymore. Well, a beautiful thing is this documentary is going to definitely bring light to the people that's in the dark. The people that think the ones that's doing it now is really the originators and we know it's not the truth. So I appreciate the documentary, and especially growing up in Brooklyn and, and seeing those in the 70s, seeing the parties, the names, it brings a whole lot back that we definitely forgot. So I definitely commend you brothers for bringing the story of truth to the masses who are sleeping. Anybody in the Bronx don't like it, come see me. <laughs> you heard? Urban Wall Street, holla. So you know, we're still here at the Founding Fathers screening. I'm here with some legends in hip hop, if you don't know. I'm talking about the Disco Twins. They've done some phenomenal things before you even knew some of the people that you know now. Brothers, honor to meet you. Amazing contribution to hip hop. And y'all done something, y'all were businessmen in the early, early ages before hip hop even had that name. So I quickly want you to tell me, how did it feel to be a part of the movement in your era and how you see it now? Oh, uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of history and also a part of what's going on now. The transformation on how things were between what we was doing in the analog days opposed to the digital now they're doing. And now it's about the Serato when it was usually about the vinyl. So to make that transformation for us, it was kind of hard because we so accustomed to the vinyl. The new school cats were using Serato right off the bat. Like the spin backs and what they do quick because the tables were so close together and they side by side. Our tables were way apart. Our casket was long where the tables were not side by side. They were, put, they were straight where you pick the needle up and put it there from left to right. And the mixer, was about uh, um, two, uh, 19 inches long, so it's not it's a it's a lot easier now when you're doing all them trick stuff. But we used to do it going around the tables and behind our backs at that level with a small uh, with a bigger uh, deck. Now, one thing I was very impressed with because my show was all about economic empowerment and social and covering everything you know from the beginning to the end. But something that I heard about you gentlemen that I've never heard from the early pioneers in music and hip hop and this genre that we do is beside being you know the artists, you guys are businessmen with the Frank stands and cabs. What 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 was it about you two that separated you to make this? You know, we're not gonna just do music, but we're gonna be businessmen. How did that come into play? Well, we didn't at that point. We we never really had a job. We usually was uh, able to work for ourselves and we decided to do the taxi cab. We almost bought the medallion, but we did a lease. And my brother and I shared the medallion and shared the hack license. They didn't know because we're twins, so we do the night shift and do the day shift. So they would never know. It was At that time, it was $600 a week and the medallion was 55000 Now it's 250000 So we, we should have bought it at that time. But we decided to uh, take it to the ne next level. Then we started getting into real estate, renting our apartments and rooms, and that's what kept us uh, above uh, above ground and, and made us uh, able to to stay functional without going out there to get a nine to five to this day. Gotta love it, gotta love it, brothers. Yeah, this is phenomenal things. I love. How'd you love the movie? How'd you like the movie? It was fantastic. Fantastic, right? Fantastic. It's a beautiful thing. Ron Lawrence and Hassan did his things, and there's some other people, the unsung heroes like Sparky D and the Funky Four, Shah Rock. What I 
question. they should be coming out with something soon. Eva King. A lot of love it. Disco Twins, Urban Wall Street, Founding Fathers screening. It's a beautiful night in Queens. Last word? Uh, also, we got my man Smalls. I think he wants to say something. He's part of, our, 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 of what we've been doing in the back. Okay, that's that DJ Smalls. Yes, DJ that's right. Smalls. Here we go. What's good, brother? How you feel? It's all love. It's all, all right, love. All right, right. Listen, I want to commend you too for your contributions Thank to the hip hop you, beginning. Brother. We got Thank DJ you. Smalls here, part of the uh, Founding Fathers documentary. Um, and I ask everybody, you know, hip hop has come a long way, brother, yes. from the beginning when it was all about fun. Yes. And to now, it's you know, it's, where is the fun? Yes. But you know, there's goodness in everything. Yes, old and new. Absolutely. And what's your take on where hip hop is now as opposed to where it was when we started this thing? Wow. Well, you know, it's just it's a, a powerful, powerful entity, hip hop. I mean, we call it hip hop. Back then, it didn't have no real name. I mean, some people call it disco, some people call it funk, others call it hip hop. Um, but to tell you the truth, it, it, it is an entity of itself. It's evolved into what it is now. Originally, we were just doing it to entertain, entertain ourselves as young, uh, uh, urban children, kids that had energy. We needed to release that. So we were found a way to entertain ourselves. So that's what we did. That Who knew? Who would have thunk it? Who would have knew, bro? Who would have thunk it? Uh, we, I, I'm just so blessed and, 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 and proud to be a part of well, and to be able to see where it's evolved through today. It's a multi-billion dollar business. You got a lot of people that are unsung heroes that help to contribute. Uh, to say somebody started it before this person or that person, well, that's a wonderful thing that we can have that type of, uh, of, of, of discussion. But the reality is it's for everyone. It's for everyone. So and last I'm having a good time. Man. Thoughts on the movie? Oh, man. Ron and Hassan did their thing on this documentary. It's going to definitely spark some controversy because uh, you know you got you got everybody has their partake on it. So we'll see what happens. But I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was truthful. And uh, you know that system thing. Oh, Queens and Brooklyn, powerful. Smashing. Right. DJ Smalls yes, gotta sir. love it. Urban Wall Street, love Founding you. Fathers, Hip Hop, Yesterday, Today, and Beyond.